This splint maintains knee extension and prevents knee flexion contractures. This splint is used when the patient is unable to achieve or maintain full knee extension. It is also used for post-operative positioning for lower extremity grafts that cross over or meet the knee joint. The knee immobilizer is most often used at night for a sustained stretch if the patient has decreased range of motion or flexion contracture present. To apply a knee immobilizer, place the immobilizer beneath the patient's leg. Have the patient straighten his leg to achieve full knee extension. The nurse or therapist may have to assist the patient into this position as this extension may be painful to achieve secondary to the burn injury or joint stiffness from immobility. Adjust the splint so that the center opening of the splint is directly over the knee joint. Check the posterior thigh for areas where the splint may be causing pressure and adjust the splint as needed. With the knee in full extension, close the splint with the straps and adjust so that the splint is fitting snugly to the leg. I usually do these two first so I can keep track of where your knee is. the Velcro a little bit on this one. Nice snug. You don't want it too snug. That'll cause pressure areas. And then okay. What you want to check is back here underneath. Make sure there's no problems back there and under here, and that your knee sits right in front of it. If it's a little too loose, you readjust. Okay. This splint will help to prevent plantar flexion contractures, protect the heel skin integrity, and protect a wound on the lower leg. This splint is used for patients that are at high risk for plantar flexion contractures if the patient is not ambulatory. This splint maintains a neutral dorsiflexion. The posterior foot splint can help maintain optimal ankle and knee position in patients with burns on their lower extremity or foot when the patient is unable to ambulate due to medical status, pain, or noncompliance. This splint has a really deep hole here for your heel because I don't want your heel to be pressing against anything. When you put your foot into this, you need to make sure it's floating in that area. The heel of this splint is bubbled to prevent contact with the heel and help prevent injury to the skin. Do not pad this area of the splint. To apply the splint. To apply the posterior foot splint, the ankle will need to be in a neutral position while in the splint. I'm firmly pressing it down and making sure that goes in. If you can slide your heel down anymore, good, nice. Assist the patient to achieve this position prior to placing the splint if possible. Place the patient's foot into the splint, making sure that the foot is fully seated into the splint. This splint has three straps on it, okay? One Two go across your foot, one goes across your mid leg. You start with the one with the pad on to go right across your foot like that. You want this to be protected so we get no pressure here. So don't strap it on too tight. Goes on there and comes across and snug that up a little bit. The second one comes in a crisscross pattern right across that top one so that it doesn't, um, again, cause uh, pressure there. Okay, the third one comes right across this part of your leg, hooks on over here, and again, soft part is right there, so you don't get any pressure. 
then you're on, okay? If you do not have these straps attached to your posterior foot splint, then you can use an elastic wrap to keep it in place. Do not allow the patient to weight bear on this splint as it is extremely dangerous and slippery.